Welcome to all motion control users. In our introduction video, we explained the positioning function of the Cinemax Drive system in general and made the axis move by just a few clicks. For this tutorial, we want to have a closer look at the configuration of the basic positioner. Especially the various possibilities of the mechanic settings will be in focus here. The basic positioner is able to control linear and rotary axes with absolute and relative positioning commands. For this purpose, motor encoders or machine encoders can be used for positioning detection. The application possibilities are therefore wide. We want to explain to you by means of a typical mechanic how you can find the appropriate settings. Let's start with the configuration and start drive. In our project, we find an already commissioned drive unit with two axes configured. For the first axis, we want to activate the positioning functionality. Therefore, we have to activate the function module Basic Positioner in the function view of the basic parameterization. As you see, the position controller function module is also activated implicitly. Under the basic parameterization node, the entries for mechanics and technology functions are becoming visible. Let's now have a closer look at our example mechanics. We are going to parameterize a linear axis. As you can see, we are operating a rotary motor that drives a linear axis by an attached spindle. There is a gearbox between the motor and the spindle with the ratio of motor side to load side of 2 to 1. The spindle pitch is defined to 20 mm of linear movement per one revolution of the load side. In this application, the motor encoder is used for the position detection and the positioning should be realized with a resolution of 1 micrometer. Those values are needed for describing the mechanical system in the wizard you can see here. In the first step, we select the encoder system for the positioning control loop. In most cases, the decision is made between motor encoder, which is encoder 1, and machine encoder, which is encoder 2. If the encoder system is selected accordingly, the placement of the encoder is clearly shown in the graphic. The second step is to enter the transmission ratio between motor and load if there is a mechanical gearbox. Important here, the input is made by numerator and denominator, whereby all broken ratios can be specified without rounding errors. In our example, we enter the ratio 2 to 1. So we enter the ratio of the number of revolutions before and after the gearbox. This is only one way to describe the relationship, but it is not always as easy as in our example. Therefore, I would like to give you here an important advice for the input of the gearbox ratio. Gear ratios are often indicated as rounded floating point numbers on the gearbox or motor nameplate. For example, you will find specifications such as 12.38. If you use such a rounded value for the input, thus 1238 one hundredth, this leads to a small but measurable position error with each revolution which would continue to add up with continuously same direction of rotation. To avoid this, the real exact ratio must be entered. If there is no exact specification, the number of gear teeth on the input and output sides can be entered here as the numerator and denominator. This corresponds to the actual transmission ratio of the gear unit and there will be no position deviation due to rounding errors, even after any number of revolutions. In the third step, we have to define the relation between the physical units and the neutral, so-called length unit, or shortly LU. This independent unit, LU, gives the user the flexibility to convert one load revolution into any measurement. The higher the number of length units per load revolution is defined, the higher the resolution of the actual position value preparation. The height of the input of LUs is limited by the maximum LU per load revolution. This limitation results from the encoder configuration and the gear ratio. Since we can freely define the unit of measurement for our movement, we set ourselves to millimeter for the linear mechanics. In order to be able to position as accurately as possible, a resolution of thousandths of a millimeter has proven itself. This means one micrometer corresponds to a neutral length unit of one LU, or in other words, one millimeter corresponds to 1000 LU. In our example with a spindle pitch of 20 mm per revolution on the load side, this corresponds to 20,000 LU per load revolution. The gear ratio does not have to be taken into account here, since the load side is always considered for position control. We can therefore remember that we always specify position set points in micrometer, since 1 LU now stands for 1 micrometer in our project planning. 
At this point, I would like to give you an example of a rotary axis for the purpose of completeness. Imagine a rotary transfer table with a 360 degree load movement. We would also like to be able to define the position in degrees. To be as exact as possible in positioning, we would select a resolution in milli-degrees here. So, we increase it by a factor of 1000 and get 360,000 LU per revolution of load. 1 LU now equals 1 milli-degree or 1000 LU equals 1 degree. In summary and in general terms, the following notes can be made with regard to the setting for LU per load revolution. First, the user defines his own individual user unit and position resolution by this. Second, the resolution should be as high as possible. As a rough guideline, we recommend a resolution 10 times higher than the desired positioning accuracy. With a required accuracy of one tenth of a millimeter, one chooses a resolution in hundredths of a millimeter or higher. Analoglessly, of course, for rotary axis. In the case of a rotary axis or an endlessly turning axis, the next step is to make the setting for modulo. Modulo correction is always required and activated when a mechanical system is involved in which the position is repeated psychically and does not rise endlessly. These can be different mechanics, examples are rotary knives, rotary transfer tables, chain drives and many more. The module range is the value at which the position is repeated and returns to zero, or in other words, the value at the start position and end position are exactly the same location. With a 360 degree axis with a resolution in milli-degrees, the module range would also be 360,000 LU. If the mechanics have moved forward one revolution, the position starts at zero again after 360,000 LU and is exactly at the same position. In our application, we have a linear movement via a spindle, so the activation at this point is not necessary. The adjustment of the mechanics is now completed. The configuration of the basic positioner can be found under Technology Functions of the Function View. This is where the clear diagnosis of the basic positioner, its limitations and the individual operating modes are located. In the first step, the parameterization of the limits is carried out. There are two options available below the travel range limitation. Hardware limit switches, software limit switches. Especially for linear access, such limit switches are necessary. The hardware limit switches, also known as stop cams, limit the travel range on the hardware side. This is done by an edge-triggered evaluation of the sensor at both endpoints of the travel range of the machine. The respective sensors of the hardware limit switches must be integrated and connected via the digital inputs. When a hardware limit switch is triggered, the motor breaks the current movement with the OFF3 ramp. The software limit switches limit the travel range on the software side by specifying the maximum end position of the travel range. The prerequisite for this is that the axis is homed, so that it also stops at the respective end positions. The evaluation of the hardware limit switches or the software limit switches must be explicitly activated. For our example, we only use the software limit switches. With active software limit switches, the target position is checked. If this is outside the travel range, a warning is issued. The travel range or the working range in our example application is 1 meter or 1000 millimeters. The selected positioning resolution in micrometer results in a travel range between 0 LU and 1 million LU. Experience has shown that the end positions are selected to be slightly larger than the required travel range for the application. In this example, 10 mm or 10,000 LU is added in each case. Under the limitation of the travel profile, the maximum speed and the maximum acceleration or deceleration are limited on the load side. The basic positioner will not exceed these limits. In the application, the maximum speed of the linear axis should be 12 meters per minute. Since we have chosen a resolution in micrometer, we convert with a factor of 1 million to the value in micrometer per minute and obtain 12 million micrometers or LU per minute. Note, for easier input, the parameter is already normalized to 1000 LU per minute and 12000 is entered here. The input for maximum acceleration and deceleration is done in 1000 LU per square second. As a note for parameterization, it should be considered that the deceleration times for OFF1 and OFF3 apply in the event of an error or a safe stop. With the acceptance, the corresponding delay time of the travel profile can also be accepted for the OFF1 ramp downtime. 
Thus, the ramp down time of OFF1 corresponds to the deceleration time of the travel profile. Optionally, the jerk limitation can also be activated. This limits the change in acceleration and enables smoother starting and braking during positioning. This is necessary, for example, for the transport of goods or of the protection of the mechanics. In our case, this is not considered. Up to this point, we have now activated the positioning functionality in the drive, described the mechanics and set the dynamic limits. We hope to have introduced you to the configuration of the EPOS and wish you much fun with the following tutorials, in which we will deal, for example, with the connection to the PLC. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.